Well, hi. Thanks for coming here. Uh, this is a talk for system administrators. I don't know how many system administrators are here. Can you raise your hand, please? Yeah, you don't have too many free software projects for you, right? Most of them are for developers, so hopefully you like this one. Okay. What is modular IT? Well, it's really hard to explain, as everything in, you know, oops. Well, modular IT is a distributed, virtualized, modular, integrated, and managed service-oriented architecture, which is really complex, it, and it doesn't say much. Let's go through each one of these concepts, okay? Whoops, okay. First one is distributed. So you can use it for administrate and manage big deployments of servers. Uh, we come from the Canary Islands. We are islands, so we work on one, not on land, right? So we needed something that, uh, something to manage, distribute uh, uh, systems or servers, no matter the, no matter how group, how we group them or how they interact among them. So modularity has that in common as, as a requirement. It's virtualized. If you are familiar with that concept, we've been working with it since you know many years ago, and you can see here up there you got the general structure of a modular IT server where you have the the server, the OS operating system. Then we put some manage management tools on the on the operating system. You got there one of the typical services, which is a firewall. It's not virtualized for security reasons, but all the rest services of the architecture are virtualized. Okay. And you have already management tools also on top of the base of the virtualization in order to do many stuff like, you know, uh, well, regular management stuff. And this, one of those little boxes there, it's one of the services, virtualized services, has this basic composition. We have the operative system, which can be CentOS, Debian, Windows, whatever. The service, the data on top of it, and each virtual machine has also some uh, management tools. Uh, what do we call a modular architecture? Okay, this is also a regular uh, virtualized uh, schema. We have the base system of every, every or whatever uh, virtual machine you got. You have this, for example, one service. You have more service on each machine. And then you have, for example, this one is clusterized. It's all we can be configured in, in higher, higher availability uh, by default, if you want to. And then you got, you know, you can just put systems, uh, uh, services, and change services from one machine to another one, like a regular virtualized system. The point is that the, you can do this kind of stuff centrally managed in distributed servers, which is a, a cool stuff. You don't have to do it everything by hand, or at least if you do have to do it by hand, you, can, you have tons of information to do it really quick, really fast. The services we include are, uh, are integrated with each other. There is a long way to do in this, in this concrete area, but I, I have here some little examples. For example, the LDAP and the backup services are mandatory on this architecture. This doesn't mean that the LDAP has to be the master, okay? We, can, we have uh, customers w with this architecture integrated in a Windows architecture and the master, the LDAP, master LDAP is the Active Directory or the Fedora one. For example, we have the Asterix and the Fax services integrated. This is something normal for, for, you know, Asterix has this by default. The point is that we have integrated in two different virtual machines, okay? Each service goes in a virtual machine, separate one. The fax is integrated with the email with one nice feature, which is the incoming faxes go through the email. Or for example, the group where you can, you can use the email through the group where, or if you don't want to put the group where, you can use the email through the default uh, uh, web interface we, we put on it. Okay, all of them are integrated with LDAP. It's centrally managed. All the arrows here are, should be in, in the opposite direction. They are all wrong. <laughs> okay. For example, we have, you can do manual checks through Nagios. Everybody knows about that uh, when you administrate system centrally. We use Nagios basically for uh, only manual uh, checkings, okay? 
We have some auto-checking and auto-corrections uh, scripting stuff and alert systems. All the alert systems, the, the alert system and the auto-corrections and most of the intelligence of the architecture happens on the server, not on the central in structure. That is a requirement we have because of uh, uh, the networks in the Canary Islands used to work really bad. So once you, if you lose the, the connection, still uh, all the check-ins and all the alerts has to be going on. So you have to pass the intelligence of the architecture to the service instead of having it centrally uh, because of that. And uh, we have all these services. We are updating from previous versions of this architecture. The firewall asset is an app deploy. This is a machine for deploying uh, uh, Windows clients, OK? And uh, we are right now working on audio streaming server. Some customer ask, f ask for it, so we are working on it. Of course, if you guys develop whatever application or you want to include any application on, on this architecture, it's perfectly possible. You just have to follow some rules and you can do what we call modularize a service. So you, you include it by default. So you resolve many problems like deployments, uh, managing, uh, well, all this kind of stuff that uh, many companies don't want to do or it's a tedious uh, activity for them. They just resolve it with this. And they can concentrate all the efforts on what they do best, which is the application itself. So well, this is as regular SOAR architecture, okay? Made out of free software. What is not modular IT? Modular IT is not a virtualization system itself. We use standard virtualization solutions. In this case, SEN. We used to use uh, CH root before and before that user model Linux. We have used also in the past uh, VMware. Right now we are working 100% on SEN. And Modularity is not a bunch of appliances. You can download and try. They interact with each other and interact with us, uh, the management system, OK? So it's not something you download and try. It's, it's much more than that. OK, well, you should try this, OK? First of all, who is for? Uh, sysadmin, basically. If you, do, I, as I told before, if you are developing a, your own application, this will solve you many, many, many uh, problems related with tedious activities, right? Deployment is probably the, the first one you see really fast because this architecture, it, it is deployed really, really, really fast. I mean, you send a technician to, the, to a customer and you have a, a server working in one, two hours, okay? With all the services you want. Uh, if you are an IT provider, you can use it. We, we have already other companies using uh, our system to make money, right? And it's perfectly possible. And medium-sized companies are the ones that really uh, get advantages of this stuff. Okay, we have modular IT in different servers from different customers, different hardware, uh, in a small bandwidth environments, in multi-platform environments, uh, you know, in all kinds of situations. We cannot choose the customers we want. So we have to, we have to, dis to define some system that fits in many, many, many different environments without having to change all the procedures and having to change the technologies. So what we have done is Modularity was born as an internal project. We use it in pretty much almost 90% uh, of our customers. So what we did was just put a GPL on it and just make it public. That was a couple of years ago, almost well, one year and a half. And now what we are doing is not just put a GPL on it and show it, but also let people get into it and collaborate with us. So that is why we are here. There you have all the, all the links. Let me show you one at least. OK. Oops. 
well, this is this is uh, the the Git we are using right now. Uh, Miguel Armas is the guy that put the new stuff on the project. Then we have a couple more guys that uh, um, basically get in charge of the deployments and and go through what uh, the release manager does and change stuff. And then we have a third level bunch of guys that uh, does the, the manuals and things like that. They are the ones, the, the ground technicians, okay? The ones that go to customers and deploy stuff. And uh, this is the red man we're using. And I only want to show you uh, something really Oops. Hello. There we go. Oops. Mm -hmm. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. There we go. Nope, I did something wrong. Oh, okay, yeah, that is. Mm -hmm. There we go. Well, this is a summary, a simple summary of what we got here to check the, the, how much control we got. Okay, this, most of the criticals are due to backup stuff because uh, when, when we, we back up not just our system, mo our modularity services, but also we got back up many of uh, services from other uh, providers in our customers. So many times it happens that the backup cannot be done, so we have to send an alert to them. So we solve the, our responsibility when we finish that. And uh, you can see here something like two 250 servers and something like 1,200 virtual machines. So that is the numbers we are talking about uh, when we, you know, this is something we, we have worked on quite, for quite some time. So it let us grow, which is something we couldn't do before. And all, so we have been around for more than 10 years now in the free software business, back in the Canary Islands, now in the mainland also. So, like modularity is the result of, of all that experience and all that job. I saw you, I, you already saw the numbers. Uh, we now can scale in our business. It was something, it's something that we couldn't do before. And also the last thing I want to say is that uh, basically we did this stuff because system administrators in our company uh, needed to have a life. And uh, it's something that has to happen. I mean, system administrators are burned, absolutely burned all over. I mean, I, all the ones I know are quite burned. So this kind of stuff began with that idea. Okay, we have to make these guys live better. And the only, the only way to do that is giving them control and information of what is happening in their customers. So. That's pretty much what I wanted to say. If somebody has any questions, just feel free. Okay. Just go to the URL, get into the mailing list, and that's it. Have you tried any other virtualization techniques like open reset or Okay, we are start to send uh, as I told you before, we have been trying some others, and we know in a few years we will have to switch. Yeah, open VZ or KVM is something we are trying because, you know, saying is now, I, won't say, I wouldn't say in risk, but, you know, some things have changed, so we have to be prepared. It's something we have done in the past, and for sure we have to do in the future. The point is not get stuck 
in the technology. This is more about procedures than about technology. We use puppet, we trucks, we use sand, we use medios, we use money. In, uh, I don't know, many, many, many standard uh, projects. We just configure them uh, in a proper way and just put some thinking on it to to make life easier. We don't hack them now, you know. Thanks.